Good evening and happy Wednesday or Thursday or whenever this is going to go out. I'm the kid here at Red Gaming Tech and welcome to this week's weekly walkthrough. Uh, kind of, how do you, how do you play? Um, okay, the arrow keys don't seem to be working. Um, right, so let's get started, shall we? I'm being so sloppy this week. You know how the format goes, so let's get into some gaming news. Uh, so last week, um, for the Guess the Game competition, winner was Blitzwing1, who correctly guessed that the game was Desert Strike. If I only did Jungle Strike, but I couldn't get it to run. And uh, I'm encountering issues with uh, with this week's game, uh, in that I can't seem to move. Um, does somebody want to tell me how you move in this game? I haven't played this in so long. It, it sure, you'd think it'd be left and right, surely. Is the game paused? No. Now you're going to have to like, watch me figure out how to play this game. It can't be like a mouse or something, can it? Uh, no. Oh my god, this is terrible. Okay, well while I figure out what the controls for this game are, uh, let's get into item one. Uh, so, apparently the Russian government is going to start offering grants for games that are patriotic to... Uh, you can probably hear me mashing the keys in the background. Oh, I just tabbed out. Uh, so yeah, games that are like re in a patriotic manner and uh, could potentially look at banning games that kind of deliberately portray them in a negative light. Um, I can see, like, why they would want to do that. Um, because, you know, I think a lot of games do give the Russian military in their kind of history an unfairly bad rap. Um, so I think, you know, it's good that they're encouraging a more kind of fair look at, you know, how their military is presented in games. Um, there have been games which have presented, presented, presented them uh, kind of favor, not really favorably, but more in a more realistic light. Things like Company of Heroes 2 was actually very uh, good in its portrayal of the Russian military and their history and their involvement in uh, World War II. World War II, yes. Um, so yeah, I think it's kind of a good thing that it, you know they're encouraging people to be more accurate in their in kind of how they portray the Russian military and things. Uh, they do kind of get. Kind of stereotype as the bad guys a lot um, when historically Russia has really kind of been on the more allied side of things but um, yeah let's not get into like international politics I still can't figure out how to control this fucking game it's responding to keys so is there like a control setup thing I'm just grasping at straws now oh yeah move it um, yeah the idea that they might ban ones that are kind of as they say, um, art of war, like, falsely negative, seems kind of weird, like, you know, there's a lot of games that portray Britain in kind of an unfair light, but we don't ban them, we just kind of, you know, take it on the chin, you know, I mean, Britain's done some bad shit in the past, you know, it's kind of fair that we should be represented how we were, I don't think I've really seen any that were, like, hilariously, like, unfair, um, but yeah, you know, well, uh, yeah, so uh, Russia's going to be going... <laughs> I get to the end of the first item, I still can't figure out how to get this guy to move. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, if you know what this game I can't figure out how to play is, uh, let me know in the comments and uh, I'll uh, love you or something. Um, so yeah, Russia offering grants for patriotic games. I don't know whether that has to be games made by Russian developers or uh, they're offering it to just anyone. But uh, if they're offering grants, I might have to get on with uh, Attic Door Productions and uh, make a pro-Russian military game and reap the benefits. Okay, seriously, this is really bothering me now. I'm just gonna, I'm literally going to have to press every key <laughs> on the keyboard until he responds. Uh, no, no, maybe it's like, if you have to use the number pad or something. No. No. This is embarrassing. Um, number lock is on. Okay, I can, I can now have to make it. I, I can pause the game and I can t get it to tell me how long I have left. Uh, I'm just now I'm pressing keys that no sane game in the history of ever uses. I think this game is genuinely just not working. Um, can I get him to jump? Maybe no. Do I need to? This is weird. I haven't played this game in years and now it's bugging out on me. Uh, no. Right, it's responding to input. Um, uh, okay, I'm going to have to actually just say this game is not working. So, um, yeah, let's just have that in the background uh, and I'll keep mashing keys while I continue. Uh, so let's see. 
Uh, this is actually a good one. Uh, <laughs> of course, all the stuff I tell you is good. Uh, Xbox One may be supporting keyboard and mouse peripherals. Uh, Microsoft has said they don't have any plans to develop their own you know, keyboard and mouse peripherals for it. But they said that they'll welcome third-party developers who want to go ahead and do that. That's a very good thing because of one specific type of game, and that is RTSs. So you've had games like uh, Halo Wars and uh, Command & Conquer 3 that were available on 360. Um, as a general, I mean, you even had, like, back in the day, you had StarCraft come out on N64. And as a general rule, RTS games do not work well with a controller. You need a mouse to play those games. Um, trying to play Command & Conquer 3 with a controller would be just, like, the biggest handicap imaginable. Um, so... I'd imagine there's going to be kind of a flurry of, if you know, if the console does support keyboard and mouse peripherals, there'll be a whole flurry of them being produced by various people. You know, Mad Cat's always get in there, and uh, like Razer will probably bring something out. Um, what other big peripheral makers are there? I don't know. Turtle Beach? So they just do headsets. I don't know. Um, but yeah, but the uh, now I'm just losing control of my tongue. Uh, so the other thing that it could cause an issue with is going to be uh, going to be first-person shooter games, uh, i.e. Call of Duty, Battlefield, things like that, because people with a mouse and keyboard will have a significant advantage because it's considerably easier to play an RTS game with a mouse and keyboard, which is like, why... Oh! Oh, did I, did I just cheat? I think I may have just entered a cheat. Wow. I accidentally cheated. What was I pressing when I did that? Oh, if you press L, you can just... Okay, I just won the game, I think. That's the easiest cheat ever. You just hit L and it takes you to the next level. Awesome. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so people with a mouse and keyboard will uh, have a significant advantage over people who are using a controller in first-person shooter games, but, you know, maybe they could have some system, like if the console detects you using a mouse and keyboard, it automatically disables auto-aim to kind of balance things out a bit. Although a lot of games, um, like upcoming first-person shooters and things that I've had to go on at, like, events and things like that, um, don't have auto-aim. Uh, I know for a fact that in the version of Battlefield 4 that I played, the most recent kind of public, you know, beta showing off the game thing, uh, the game didn't have auto-aim enabled. Not auto-aim, you know, aim assist, whatever you want to call it. The game's making a weird noise whenever I press left. Okay. Uh, anyway... Um, oh, I think I might have just figured out what's the, what the problem is. Don't tell me it's that. No, that wasn't the problem. Okay, um, yeah, so the Xbox One, uh, it says May, I'd say it probably, somebody's going to make a keyboard and mouse set for that console. Um, so the console will support those types of peripherals and Microsoft are going to allow it. Uh, so good thing for RTS games, might cause some issues in first person shooters. Uh, good thing all round, I would say. I'd say, uh, for, you know, forcing a player to use a controller has always been kind of a downside to consoles, in my opinion. Uh, right, what else we got? Sony has confirmed the official PS4 bundles for the UK. Uh, so you've got the first one, is literally just a console and a controller, just the standard, which is also going to be the cheapest, of course. Um, you can get the Shadowfall bundle, the Killzone Shadowfall bundle, uh, which gives you the console, uh, a controller, obviously, and a copy of, uh, obviously, the game, Killzone Shadowfall. Uh, the third includes the console and Ubisoft of Watch Dogs. Uh, and the last one is the Mega Bundle, which includes the PS4. Uh, well, two controllers, actually. Uh, Killzone, a PlayStation camera, and that's your lot. Uh, so obviously, you know, each of those is priced differently. The base console with just the controller and the, the uh, console is obviously the cheapest. The Bells and Whistles Mega Bundle thing is going to be more expensive. Uh, I don't have precise prices on those yet. I think the base console will cost three hundred ninety nine ninety nine British pounds sterling. I think was the latest uh, pricing on that, uh, or maybe that was US dollars. I don't know. Uh, it's in one of those currencies. It's three hundred ninety nine ninety nine. I'm just going to hit. L. Oh no, the L thing stopped working now. Oh, maybe I'm on the last level. Okay. Um, so as for what I'll be going for, I'll probably just be going for the base console because I'm not really that super excited about any of the launch titles just yet. Watch Dogs does look awesome. Killzone, I've never played any of those. Um, I've never really been a... Well, I, I was a huge PS2 fan. Uh, and then this generation, I haven't really used a PlayStation 3 that much. I mean, I have one. Um, 
but I've only really used it for PlayStation exclusive stuff. Um, so, you know, I mean, I'm going to be getting an Xbox One probably f before a PS4. Um, but, oh, I chair just broke. <laughs> um, but uh, when I do get a PS4, it will most likely be the base console, and then I'll just, unless they have like a bundle with a game that I really want. Um, I will just get the base console and then pick a game to get with it. Um, things that I'm excited for: Kingdom Hearts 3, sadly. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy 15. Uh, mm, those are probably the two I'm most excited about at the moment. Um, although Final Fantasy 15, I think, will be on three on Xbox One as well. I, I have a suspicion that maybe Kingdom Hearts will be as well. Uh, but yeah, with the base console, I get mostly to save money because I'm a pauper and uh, I don't have an exactly great job and I haven't been called in for the last three days, so I'm going to be losing some epic wages. Thanks, Obama, with your zero-hour contract. Um, right, so the Writers Guild... This is this is I'm for now, moving on to something else, just so you know. Uh, the Writers Guild Award uh, for video games shortlist has been announced. The Writers Guild Award, of course, being a UK uh, thingy-ma-bob. Um... So yeah, it's, it's only only British developed games are eligible. Um, so the shortlist. I, I, when I read this, I was kind of like, huh? Those are some odd games to pick. But um, I mean, one of them makes a lot of sense. But I mean, the shortlist is Tomb Raider, Thomas Was Alone, and Lego City. Uh, Lego City Undercover, I think, was the full title of the game. Uh, Tomb Raider, I can make sense. I I I would say it makes sense being in there because that was an awesome piece of writing. Um, Thomas Was Alone, I never played. I don't actually know that much about it, but I hear it is pr a pretty good game. Uh, I guess it has a good story, otherwise it wouldn't be shortlisted. Lego City, I know jack all about. Um, and from what I've seen of Lego games in the past, I don't really... I'm still mashing... Oh! Did something happen? Oh! Uh, I'm still mashing away at the keys, trying to get this game to respond in some way. Pressing left and W... That button seems to do something. Is that like restart the level key? Um, yeah, so Thomas Was Alone, I don't know a huge amount about, but you know, the, the writing, the Lego games, are they famous for having good writing? Um, you know, they, they've always seen kind of like kiddie fare, but apparently not. Apparently they uh, have some talented writers behind them as they're up for this uh, Writer's Guild Award for video game writing. Um, I'd say, in my opinion, because I haven't played Thomas Was Alone, I don't know a huge amount about it. Lego games, not really my bag. Um, I would say that my uh, number one to win that would be Tomb Raider. Wasn't the greatest story ever written, but um, for UK developed games, I mean, I'm guessing GTA 5 would have been in there if it had been released sooner. Um, but then, you know, the story in GTA 5, I haven't found that great so far. I mean, yeah, Tomb Raider had a good story. It wasn't like the best thing ever. But, okay, sometimes it does things when I press buttons, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, yeah, Tomb Raider wasn't exactly the greatest thing ever, but, um, you know, it had a good story, it was, it was solidly written, you know, it was a nice kind of prequel to the series. Overall, good game. Oh, I just, did I just change the control mode? How did I do that? Oh, shit, feck. Now it wants a, now it wants a joystick. Um, I don't want to be in joystick mode, I want to be in keyboard mode. Oh, cr okay, control and various buttons seem to do things. Don't want, don't want the sound. No, oh! Well, okay, we've just quit the game. Uh, <laughs> let's just go back in there, shall we? Um, right, well, are you going to respond now? This has been so, like, so sketch this week, sorting this thing out. Okay, control E, I think, quit the game. No, control Q quits the game. Uh, well, that's just, that's just going to be a big hint as to what game I'm playing, but I think everyone knows this game anyway. Um, so really, it's going to be the, whoever names it first. Uh, so finally this week, uh, you know, no, what happened? Finally for this week, while I try and hide my sheer embarrassment at keyboard mode. Oh yes, he's moving! Finally! Right, okay, so while I do the last item, uh, you get to watch me play this game probably poorly. Um, why it wasn't, I think, why was it in joystick mode? That's really crap. Oh, fuck! Oh, okay, that, that hurt. Right. Uh, so last item is something that's been kind of on everyone's mind this week. Uh, GTA 5. Um, I'm actually a couple of days late reporting this. It happened a couple of days ago now. Um, but it has got an, a new patch for the online mode, which is having significant issues at the moment. Uh, people not being able to get online, including myself, and then crying themselves to sleep at night because they just want to play the game. Um, 
the latest patch does seem to have fixed some of the issues. Um, it's now considerably easier to get into a game. Um, I've got a couple of friends who are still having a lot of problems and can't get online at all. Um, but the number of people that having that happen seems to be, you know, getting lower and lower. Oh, I remember this bit. Um, so, oh, that's vicious. Okay. Um, so yeah, it seems to be happening to fewer and fewer people. The whole thing seems to be a lot more stable on the whole. Um, I, I'm still getting some issues where I get randomly kicked from games for no apparent reason. Um, but yeah, I mean, considering a few days ago I literally could not get on at all, my characters were being kind of deleted left, right and centre, it was kind of just generally a mess. Uh, they have improved it quite considerably. Uh, why do I always end sentences like that with that weird kind of twang on them? Uh, anyway, um, so that in, in the actual kind of, I guess you'd call it like the, the loading screen for the game where they put kind of like server messages and stuff, uh, Rockstar have actually put a little notice saying that if you try to log in and your character seems to have disappeared, don't create a new character in that slot and don't hit retry, otherwise you run the risk of losing your character. Uh, and they say they're working on fixes for that uh, at the moment. Um, you know, how much work is going into that and how much money that's costing them, I don't know. Uh, but at least they're addressing the problem. Um, so, oh, oh crap. Um, so yeah, you're going to have to be a bit patient. The, the game is now playable, at least. Um, oh, Jesus. Okay, um, so yeah, that's kind of some pretty solid advice, is don't, um, if your character appears to have kind of gone AWOL, uh, don't hit retry when it offers to uh, reconnect to the servers, and don't, uh, oh, whoa, oh, that hurt my eyes. Um, don't create a new character in that slot, because it will just overwrite the character, and all will be lost, and that won't be terribly good. Um, so for now, if you're having connection issues, just be patient, they are working on it, or as they say, they're working on it. That was a pointless expedition up there. Um, but yeah, I think we're all aware of the ongoing issues that the game has been having. So, um, you know, there's not really much else to say on that. Can I walk in? Oh, I can walk. Um, yeah, so GTA 5 has online problems. I think we all know about that already. Um, but yeah, they have released another patch um, a couple of days ago that seems to have fixed a lot of the issues or at least improved them. I'm just going to get myself killed because I'm bored of life. Oh, that's brutal. That's like the first, I think that's probably the first time I saw blood in a game was playing this when I was a kid. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. Um, yeah, somebody, well, it's going to be whoever gets there first with what game I'm playing because I think everyone knows. Um, tell you what, tell me the game and the name of the main character. Just And it has to be the character in this game. Um, not any of the other ones in the series. It has to be the specific one. Um, anyway, yes, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. I've been the kid here at Red Gaming Tech. Thanks for listening to this week's weekly walkthrough, and I'll be back at, back at you. <laughs> I'll be back with you next week for another roundup of the coming week's news. Thanks for listening, and um, I promise not to play a game that's in keyboard mode next week. Cool. So I'll see you around. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.